Hello everyone, welcome back, Coach Fury here, and we're back today with another episode of our Let's Play series of The Answer. We are in the off-season, as um, as we expected, obviously, from the last episode. Um, we we kind of crashed out of the first round of the playoffs, unfortunately. Probably due to, to my own fault, um, missing the, um, the fact that Eric Snow, our, our key point guard, was not back in the rotation, and we actually had McKee, um, our, our, our small forward slash sort of guard, really, playing in the point guard position, which which meant that we were not really at full strength going into the playoffs. Um, that being said, we, we did take the heat to the seven games, um, despite not having one of our, you know, our starting players in the rotation, which means that I've, I've made a slight mess up here. Um, first one I've, I've, I've done for a little while, really, um, in Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 20. And um, it means that we are actually have quite an interesting episode ahead of us, really. Um, we obviously ended last last season with um, that first round exit, the, the Sacramento Kings led by Chris Webber taking the title in the end. And I, I honestly felt that we could have probably beaten them if we'd have gotten there. But it's, it's not always the way, which means that we... we um, I still haven't won that title for Ann Iverson in, in the first season. So big decisions coming up, really, and one that we're, I'm slightly nervous for actually coming into this one this offseason because, um, as I mentioned in the last episode, the actual gameplay that I'm using for this is not sandbox mode, so I, I actually can be fired by the uh, the ownership of the 76ers. And if, if that happens, then, well, we'll see what happens with this Let's Play. But um, based on the... the requirements um from from last from the season which was to make a deep playoff run we obviously didn't do that and we we you know in terms of keep Ann Iverson's roster demands I'm not sure how we even assess that but we have quite an important phone call coming up as you can see the flashing button here that we we have with the ownership um to, to basically understand whether we are actually going to be in um the hot seat for next season or not with with the 76ers whether we are going to be booted out after one season um, I'm really hoping that our um, regular season record, which was over 50 plus wins, is enough to hopefully show signs that we are more than capable of becoming a championship team. So, yeah, we'll see how this phone call goes, shall we? Um, let's take it. Okay. Hello, coach. Now that the season is over, I thought we'd have a quick chat about it. So tell me how you rate your performance this season. Okay. So I clearly didn't do an excellent job. I don't think I'd be fair to say I, I'm pleased with my performance. Um, all in all, not too bad, I think. I could have done better. To be honest, I didn't do a great job. And there's a lot of static on the line. Um, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with the ownership and say I, I could have done better. I feel the regular season we did really well. The playoffs was where I messed up. So let's let's try honesty. Honesty is the best tactic, isn't it, as, as, well, as they say. So let's go with that. Cool. Okay. Well, you did manage to at least stick to our agreed upon budget, even though you, the team you put out did not live up to what I was expecting. Still, I'm willing to give you some more time. Oh, thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. We're still going to be in the in the GM role. Yes, I would definitely like to return as GM. Okay. It's going to call me in a couple of days to discuss. Okay. Thank goodness for that. We have survived. That was a nerve-wracking couple of minutes there to start this episode. But um, let's just advance and get to the next phone call, which hopefully will come up soon. Here we go. Okay. thought we have a quick chat about the upcoming season. So tell me, how's the team going to fare this season? Uh, well, I think based on the fact that we, we did so well last year, we do have some, some players coming off the books. I think we'll make a good playoff run again. I think it's fair to say. I think, you know, we're definitely going to be a playoff team. I think we're going to be there or thereabouts. Um, a deep playoff run is certainly respectable. And maybe we can win it all next year. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Two years, two years to win it. We can do that. Success comes at a price. What's the cost of our success going to be? Uh, well, let's, let's try and push him. Uh, you can afford a little luxury tax, right? Although I'm not crazy about the idea of paying luxury tax. Oh, okay, I've just lost him there. I'm guessing that he was okay with that let's check so in terms of this uh i don't think that's necessarily been reset yes yet so let's advance quickly okay okay so it still is to make a deep playoff run i'm guessing based on those conversations i'm not sure where you see the salary demands or the roster the roster stru structure demands 
Yeah, I'm not sure where you see the budget. That's the player budget there. I'm guessing that's different to what our actual contractual budget is. Okay, yeah, so it is slightly. Okay, so we're, we've done that. We're on to coach hiring. Do we actually have any coaches we need to bring in? No, we don't. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with these guys, unless there's anyone who is really, really good who stands out. Um, not really. I think we're just going to try and blow past this coach hiring because we don't need anyone. So we're going to advance the entire period. Try and get ourselves onto the draft for this episode is, is my aim. Quite a big draft coming up, actually. There's some really big names in that. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But thank goodness, thank goodness we have survived my complete and utter catastrophic failure in the um, in the playoffs um, to, to give us another run at this. And um, what a relief that was. Okay, what have we got in the inbox? Okay, we've done the coach hiring, so we don't need to worry about that. Rookie combine. Okay, here we are. Right, so... In terms of players in this draft, let's see if we can uh, get the league media up and, and check the magazine out a bit. Uh, rookie guide, here we go. So this is the mock draft, I believe. So they reckon Mike James is going to go first overall, which is crazy. Um, but you can see some of the names here. I mean, for anyone familiar with the NBA will know Zach Randolph, Paul Gasol, Gilbert Arenas, Jason Richardson. Richard Jefferson, Joe Johnson, I mean Chris Anderson, D'Alembert, Wallace, Murphy. I mean these are all guys that are pretty much, st you know, still are well, probably only just retired. Some of these guys actually past sort of four or five years. Um, Ed Curry, the infamous guy who went, you know, high selection and looked really good and really promising at the beginning, and then kind of faded away as the the entire landscape of the NBA changed. But you know, there's there's some solid solid players in here. Um, so who knows? We might be able to pick up one. Um, in, in terms of what we've got roster-wise, let's have a quick look at that. So this is what we've got contractually on the books. I mean, I'd like to move the likes of Oli. Um, I mean, Jones was pretty solid for us actually. I mean, I'm not too worried about him. I'd like to try and move Jones and Buford. We don't really need Geiger and McCullum, so I'd like to try and move them. So let's let's see if we can quickly open up a, a trade window. Is there anyone who's got any cap at this stage? Um, let's, let's actually have a quick look at that first. I imagine most people don't because they're holding on to salaries. Yeah, okay, so the Bulls have, are the only team that have cap and the Clippers. Let's just see, let's just see, let's just see. Bulls, how would you like to take on these contracts for me? Because I don't really want them. Um, and I'll give you uh, a second round. I'll give you pick 56 this year. For that ah yes okay nice we've dumped the salary that was the main thing that actually clears us up a, a bunch of salary um which is great going into free agency now i know that we're going to be a bit short on rosters now but i mean we've, we've managed to dump the guys i wanted to get rid of so we've you know in terms of salary position we are going to look much better i know that obviously cap status looks a bit weird at the moment but that that was worth it just basically getting nothing back and sending a second round pick this year to do that um because by looking at the free agency, when we get to that, probably in the next episode, it looks much, much better. Okay, right, so the uh, the combine looks like it's been done. And we are now into rookie workouts. So let's let's go and have a look at that. So we have the 25th pick, I believe. 27th pick, our 27th pick in this draft. So we're not going to be picking up any stars, but we might be able to get ourselves a nice little rotation player here. Um, so let's, let's have a look. So we've got our staff who have the ratings so in terms of 27 i mean we're probably looking at guys like a, a arroyo i think and um, we'll give him an invite um michael bradley's who we're actually projected to have aren't we yeah i'd like to give curry a workout as well because i mean he's i mean looking at this it looks like the tyson chandler and co are going to be around our our remit which is is kind of surprising to be honest with you um so we'll give them a look if i can find him he's probably on the second page no, he's not. Where is he? I lost him. Have I lost him? Curry, where are you? E, so he's going to be on the second page. Eddie Curry, there you are. So he doesn't have a rating. Okay, so he must have missed the combine, I'm guessing. 
Who else missed the combine actually out of interest? The Chandler will give you an invite, definitely. Clive Brown, the famous number one overall pick, we'll, we'll give you a look as well. Chris Anderson, we'll definitely look at. Um, Kendrick Brown, yeah, okay, we'll look at you. So they're the kind of guys who we need to keep an eye on because if they've missed the combine, nobody else is going to necessarily have any ratings on them unless they provide them an invite. So who knows? Who knows? Tyson Chandler might drop. Because he refused that invite, um, re refused to go to the combine, um, we might get lucky. So this is what they're projecting, our staff are projecting in terms of the top players. Um, we'll give our Watson a, a look at as well. Um, we'll go to the second page, let's have a look. This is more like where, where we're probably going to realistically be drafting someone. Uh, I mean, Tony Parker's meant to go 13. If he drops, we just take him. Same with Okur. Dead Bro is an interesting one. I, I'm not... Don't remember the name, so we'll give him a look. Um, Troy Murphy. Uh, let's be honest, you're no, you're definitely not going to go anywhere near us now. You're projected to go just outside the top ten. There's some interesting names in this draft, definitely. Um, Stephen Hunter will give you a look at. Uh, how many have we got left? Eight invites left. Okay. Okay, let's, that's our staff list. Let's have a look at what the actual rankings are according to the, the magazine and the media. So obviously we're not going to get any of these guys. Um, I mean, if we get Batia, I mean, we definitely would just take him again. No questions asked. We'll give Bobby Simmons a look at. Um, Brandon Armstrong, you can have a little look. Daryl Wallace, yeah. Some interesting point guards I've not actually heard of in terms of names here. Um, Charlie Bell, yeah, you can have a we'll have a look at you. Jason Collins, you you were always around the league for quite a while, so we'll we'll have a look at you as well. Anyone else that I really desperately need to have a look at? I don't think so. I mean, all those names, if they drop, we just, we'll just take them, guys. We're not even going to mess around with that. It's just more the names where we're not sure. Um, so, Keith, I'll have a look at you. And I think that's it. I'm quite happy with that. Um, we'll head to the draft, I think. Let's see what happens, shall we? Okay, college draft. Check hard news. Evaluation. Ah, oh, okay, we've got some evaluation for free agency now. Perhaps we'll come back to that one. But some, I mean, this is why I said we should definitely try and clear some cap. Look, we've got Vince Carter, Nowitzki, Walker, Jameson, Pierce, Mabry. I mean, it's pretty stacked free agency. So, good job we managed to clear some of the, the, um, the, the salary there. So we head to the draft, and I do love this intro. It does get you psyched up for the draft. So we're just going to chill out and, and watch this for a little bit. I mean, there's some good players in this draft. Does, I mean, Mike James, I'd be amazed if Mike James goes first. Battier, I'd love to get Battier. So if we got him in the end of the first round, it'd be amazing. Joe Johnson, fantastic player. Troy Murphy was a good player. Nice power forward, actually, where we need someone. A Kerr was solid. Zach Randolph would be amazing if we got Zach Randolph. Can you imagine that? Jefferson was a good player. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to get a pole Gasol. He's going to go top five. Here we go. 2001 draft. We're picking low, so we're not going to get any top prospects. But we'll, we'll, we'll follow it. We'll follow it and see what happens. 
love that intro. Wolverine Studios, you've done a fantastic job with that intro, I have to say. Really gets you into the draft mood. Really feels like you're actually there. Okay. Let's start the draft. So the Clippers are on first. So our pundits begin the uh, the warm-up intro. I mean, for me, if I have a look, I mean, where's my... How do I get to my uh, war room? So for me, I mean, honestly, if I had to pick, where's the, uh, the mock draft? I mean, they reckon Mike James is going to go first. I'd be amazed if Arenas or Pau Gasol does not go first overall. I mean, they're the two game changers that are here. Yeah, all drawing over Mike James. Wow, I really would definitely not pick Mike James first in 2001 draft. I'll tell you that now. But, you know, it's the Clippers. I mean, the Clippers were a franchise that never did really that well. So um, until they managed to get uh, Chris Paul and, and Blake Griffin, obviously Griffin in the draft, Paul through trade. Um, let's see who they take they have taken mike james that that's just crazy um, we're gonna have to have a look at mike james after this because for me just just by name alone there's no way i'd have taken him first overall i mean it says he's not a great spot up shooter most of his shots moving forward but oh, okay we've lost that so it's the six foot two guard mike james goes first overall in the 2001 draft which is amazing Maybe the pundits are loving it. The Clippers are on the ball here, exactly who I just picked in the situation. I don't agree with you guys there. Yeah, see, second pundit said he's a bit mixed on that, and I, I do agree with you there. Okay, let's move on to the next pick. So the, the Suns are up next. And, oh, we've got a trade as well that's just happened. Looks like a minor trade, so we're not going to talk about that. So no surprise, Pau Gasol goes second overall, which is an absolute steal in my book. Um, he should have definitely gone first overall. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic bit of luck there by the Suns. They, I think they moved up in the draft as well, if I remember from the last episode. Um, yeah, okay, so they love that pick. Let's have a look who are the Pistons going to take. So the Pistons have taken Zach Randolph, okay, and um, you know Michigan State in the same region, I guess. Um, solid pick. I mean, can't really argue with Zach Randolph. I mean, he was such a good scoring forward. Just, just I was really hoping he would drop though because he didn't turn up to the combine. But it looks like everyone else has, has, has noticed him as well. So they're mixed on that. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, one likes it, one doesn't. So let's move on to the Grizzlies, who have taken Richard Jefferson. Yeah, okay, no no real surprise there. Another guy who's gone, uh, which we'd have expected to go higher. I guess the interesting one is, is where Gilbert Arenas goes. Um, I'd, have, I'd have probably had him ahead of Richardson, just because of this era. He was such a good scoring guard, and um, hopefully his off-the-court troubles won't appear here either. So, But anyway, let's move on to the Nuggets, who are going to take Joe Johnson. Yeah, that's a solid pick, again, um, in my opinion. Uh, Joe Johnson, you know, was a predominantly, you know, awesome scoring guard. Um, so you can't really go wrong there. And he actually does, as the game develops and, you know, three-point line probably develops and the shooting develops a bit more, he's probably going to be a really good value pick for the length of his career. Let's move on to the uh, the Bucks. We've taken Chris Anderson. Wow, okay, Gilbert Arenas is dropping here. Um, which is crazy. Chris Anderson, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, the Birdman, I guess. He was always solid. I mean, he's never, he never really became a, you know, an all-star type player, I guess. But um, he's an explosive centre. Um, so let's move to the Bulls. We have taken Gilbert Arenas. Okay, so Bulls managed to get a bit of luck there. You know, him falling onto their lap really. So that's a great value pickup in my opinion. I'd have had Ilvinus as probably a top three pick, um, alongside probably Randolph and and Pau Gasol. So, uh, great great move there by the Bulls. So we move on to the New York Knicks next. They've taken Troy Murphy, probably a bit of a a secure pick in my opinion. Um, he is not going to set the world alight, but I mean 
considering where you know the I mean I'm not sure who else is left actually but um let's have a look who else was left in the draft so I mean you could have taken Bate Parker I mean there's still those two I'd have probably taken Gerald Wallace as well is, is a great is a great player so probably would have taken one of those over him but you know he's, he's going to be a solid starter at least um and the Nets oh we've got a side trade which is nothing too interesting the Nets have taken Richardson okay yeah he's a solid scoring guard so a kind of middle value pick I guess I I'd have probably taken Parker and Battier first but yeah I can see why I can see why they've done that so we move on to the Houston Rockets who have taken Shane Battier no surprise there that Daryl Morey has taken Shane Battier um <laughs> Maury Ball is, is still at play in the Wolverine Studios draft day sports pro basketball 20 for sure because that's uh, the exact kind of player that they would like a bit gutted he didn't fall really but you know he's, he's inside the top 10 so he probably was never going to fall to us anyway so we move on to the uh, the Pelicans we've taken Gerald Wallace which is a great value pickup really just outside the top 10 he's going to be a pretty good I imagine scoring wing as he was in real life, so good, a good pick up there by the Pelicans, in my opinion. Which means it's interesting because now let's have a look at the war room. So no one's really dropped. Dallin Bear's dropping. He was meant to go inside the top ten. Parker's next paid to go. I mean, there's still some some nice options there. Um, hopefully, a couple of misses by the AI, and we might get someone here. Um, so the Thunder have taken Tony Parker, which is is. Could still, to be honest with you, he probably should have gone inside the top ten. Um, if he's anything like his real life counterpart, anyway, um, you know, when he's when his weakness is he often goes straight up a rebound box now, and he lacks blocking ability. I mean, if that's his only weakness, and he's a point guard, I'm, I think they're going to be very happy with him. So we move on to the Washington Wizards. We've taken Jamal Tinsley, who was a you know a really solid point guard for that. I, I remember him on, mainly on that Indiana Pacers team that that was a really good team at the time um tough nosed def defensive team bit of flair in them as well so a solid pick up there in my opinion by the wizards um we will move on to the magic who have taken him at occur yeah um solid pick up i guess um i do think that dan and bear is falling though which is really interesting for us um he's meant to go inside the top 10 which hopefully means that you know some of these things might get a bit um, ordered about. I mean, Tyson Chandler's still not gone off the board, but he's meant to go a lot later. So we move on to the uh, the Miami Heat next. We've taken Bobby Simmons. Okay, I think Bobby Simmons was a pretty solid pro. I don't think he had anything really stood out, but he was a pretty solid rotational wing, I guess, if I remember it, what, how he was. Um, we'll see how he materializes here. So we move on to the Spurs, who. Unfortunately, can't take Tony Parker now um, at pick 16. And they've taken Brendan Hayward. Yeah, okay, Brendan Hayward was a, was a really good defensive uh, centre at the time. I think he had a pretty good career in the end, actually. He, 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 I think he ended up mainly in Dallas, if I remember right. Um, yeah, I mean, his size, his size, his shot blocking defender. He's not going to score you many points, but solid. So move on to the uh, the Trailblazers next, who have taken Dan and Bear. He finally comes off the ball at... You know, a lot lower than he was projected to go. I'm surprised that he, he fell so far, really. Um, great steal there by the Portland Trailblazers, in my opinion. I think, you know, even if he's raw, I mean, that might, might be the reason why he's dropped. But, you know, picking him up at 17 when he should have gone inside the top 10 is, is a great value pickup. So move on to the uh, the Pacers next. We've taken Patrick Debro, okay. Um, a guy we did look at, I think. Um, we did scout, but I was not... I, can't, I have no real comments on him because I don't actually remember him much as a player. But our, you know, we're getting closer to our pick now. It looks like we might be able to pick up someone here we can actually really use. Um, let's have a look. So we, you know, we've got Ed Curry still on the board. Um, he looks like he's pretty solid scoring centre actually in this. Uh, Tyson Chandler's rated really low, which is interesting. So he. You know, he had a much better career than um, than Curry. So we might have an interesting decision when we get to to our pick as to what we actually do because there's there's some players on the board who actually I, I don't wouldn't mind taking. Um, so we move on to the Hawks. Um, 
who have taken, I'm not sure who that was, Earl Watson. Okay, so Earl Watson's come off the board. Um, we definitely did scout him. Um, he was rated, I think, as a four star when I just had a quick look. Um, don't think we can go back and look at him, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. So we'll move on to the Boston Celtics, who have taken Eddie Curry. Ah, just seven picks away from us. That would have been a nice pickup for us. Um, he was a really good value scoring center. So, oh well, okay, that happens. Um, probably was a bit hopeful that he would drop that far to us. But, um, you know, when guys miss the combine, you never know. You might sometimes get lucky. So we move on to the Lakers. We've taken Eddie Griffin, uh, who I remember was... a. Just a basically a three and D type player, if I remember right, um, which I think sounds like very like much like his description here as well. Um, yeah, okay, I'm not overly worried. I'm not going to comment too much on that one. Um, Minnesota Timberwolves, who are up next, have taken Carlos Arroyo. Okay, that's that's a shame because he'd have been a nice one for us to pick up. Um, you know, we do have Eric Snow, so I'm, I'm not overly worried um about, about him but he, he he was a solid pro i mean he, he started quite a lot in the league um at the time so we move on to the toronto raptors who have taken trent and hassel a the guard um again just a, a solid pro from what i remember um nothing really stood out from him let's have a look at our war room now because we are getting closer to our pick now the staff are pretty much saying Michael Bradley is, is the one that's a pick up. Okay, interesting. But, like, you know, in terms of names, we've still got Kwame Brown, Jason Collins, Tyson Chandler, Charlie Bell as well. Um, in terms of the media, they're pretty much rating everyone the same at this point. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. The, uh, the Mavericks are up next, and they have taken Daryl Walls, who I have no idea who that is. <laughs> So we're going to quickly move on with that one. Uh, Chris Keith goes next to the Golden State Warriors. From UNLV. Um, I don't remember him off the top of my head either. So we are now one pick away. So we have the Jazz coming up next. We'll let them run a bit of the clock down as we look at who possibly we might want to take. So, I mean, the, the scouts, you know, the staff, our scouts and coaching team are screaming at us to take Michael Bradley at this point, who is, is, is a good rebounder, pretty average across the board. Um, but the one, the one that's in my head is, is Tyson Chandler. Why, why are we not taking Tyson Chandler? I guess we didn't scout him is probably why, um, because we didn't think he would fall this far. So, I mean, in my head, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to just overrule it as GM, I think. And, and say, look, sorry guys, but I'm I'm going to take Tyson Chandler if he's there. He, he'd just be a fantastic pickup, um, even if he is as um, what he says here in terms of scatter rate, and he's only a three star. Even if he is just that, I I think it's worth taking the uh, the punt on it. Um, so we're going to let the Jazz take their pick, and they have taken Charlie Bell, which means that Tyson Chandler is on the board, um, and I think it's a no brainer if I'm honest. Um, he was meant to go 23rd overall. Um, in terms of other guys who are around, I mean, we did look at Omar Cook, um, but I'm not worried about him. Um, I, I just think that we we come in and we just we take Tyson Chandler. I think it's a no-brainer at this point. So that's what we're going to do. He's, uh, passing handling is not great, but that's fine. He's a center. His scoring looks average. Rebounding looks good. Blocking defense looks average. Um, even if he comes out, as a three-star player, I mean, we're going to be more than happy with that. So I think we just take him. We're going to select Tyson Chandler, guys. And let's see what the uh, what the pundits have to say on us for that one. We're waiting for the pundits to, uh, to wake themselves back up and comment on that pick. Okay, so they don't look like that's the guy who would have taken JP. Okay, fine. One pundit looks like he's clearly not going to agree with us. Okay, a few players than Chandler on the board. Okay, interesting. 
and he disagrees. It's talent there to play. I like this pick. So we're split across the board on the pundits. Um, let's let's move on and, and see what the Kings are going to take. They're probably going to take Bradley, if I'm honest. Oh no, they've taken Radmanovic. Ooh, okay. The Kings have gone for the international player there. I guess they probably won't take Bradley because they've got Weber there. So, um, and no brainer there. I'm guessing. I'm wondering now. Open the war room. I'm wondering whether we we try and trade in here and take him. Is he that good? Hmm. Who is who is it? Is the the Cavaliers? Do we want to trade in and try and get him? That's that's my question in my head now. The staff have gone crazy on him and said that he is he is awesome. I think we just do it. We just we we go in and we we try and get him. So let's go to uh, offer trade. Cavaliers, where are you at? Cleveland, Cleveland. We will take this pick off of you, and we'll give you our pick next year. I think. Let's let's. I think we'll do it. Um. Yeah, I think we will. We'll try. Should we try and do it? I think we try and do it guys let's see if they'll take it just a straight swap for our pick next year and they've accepted it okay let's go in we've done it let's go in and take him open the war room there we go we're going to get the guy that our scar our staff actually wanted and we're going to have tyson chandler as well easy easy decision there i think um whether we've made the right call or not i don't know but in terms of our scouting he looked pretty good um you know, given the fact that, you know, our pick next year is probably going to be um, lower, hopefully, as well, if we get a good free agency. And again, the uh, the pundits are not liking that pick. Okay, so that one of them likes it, one of them doesn't, but that's fine. And uh, we, I think that ends, that was the back end of the first round. So we have no more first round, uh, second round picks at all. So we are going to let the uh, the CPU finish this draft and it looks like the whole boat whole bunch of back end deals that have been done um, but let's come out of it and before we end the episode there's a couple of things that we need to look at so first thing let's, before we look at our guys I want to have a look at um, where is he where is he uh, Clippers where are you there you are I want to look at Mike Jones yeah, there you are. So this guy went first overall, which is absolutely crazy in my opinion. Um, his passing hand is good. His defense is okay. I mean, he's solid. I mean, I wouldn't take him first overall. Um, I mean, he could he could have got where's Pau Gasol? I mean, they could have got this guy, <laughs> who is a much better player. Um, okay, so I think the Clippers may have messed up there. Let's see if we have messed up. So first up, Tyson Chan, who we took, who. Okay, out the gate, doesn't look like he is going to be a great starter for us, but he has some fantastic potential. I mean, look at that rebounding. I mean, he could become one of the best rebounders in the league. Defensive ability is not great, but it's developing. Same with shot blocking. He looks like he could become an okay scorer. His passing hand is not going to be great. So, okay, worst case, worst case is that he's a, a below average starter, I would say, now. But he could be a solid rotation piece. Let's have a look at Michael Bradley. Okay, we may have slightly messed up with Michael Bradley. It's a good job that we didn't actually follow our scouts, but we actually end up trading for him. Um, okay, so he looks like he's a good rebounder, but apart from that, he's pretty average. I mean, he's probably got Tyson Chandler level now, but he doesn't have the room to grow. Okay, so perhaps we didn't do that particularly great. I mean, the positives are that they're cheap, I guess. Um, and that ends the draft for this episode I think um, next time we're going to come back in we're going to do the contracts we're going to look at free agency where we're hopefully going to have some serious cap room and you know, hopefully we can build some elite talent around Allen Iverson is, is the main thing 
uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. I mean, worst case, we've got two solid rotation guys. I mean, these guys are both going to be good rotation players for us. But we've got to build the starters now around Allen Iverson for our, our possibly, hopefully, our championship run next season. But yeah, good, a solid draft, I think. Um, we'll see. But if you've enjoyed the episode, you're enjoying the Let's Play series, it's always great to hear from you guys. And uh, hit the like button because it really does help the channel a lot. And you can always subscribe to, to follow the episodes as they come out. But we'll see you next time for Free Agency.